What's up guys? This is the second video I'm doing this like <laughs> night time like conditions. But bear with me. Uh, this video I want to talk to you about uh, being an executor or realizer, right? And this is very much linked to the, my previous entry, which I did about becoming a creator as opposed to, you know, staying as an observer, consumer, right? So, becoming an executor, right? What does this mean? Being, becoming an executor. An executor is someone who gets things done, right? Simple as. An executor is someone who gets things done, right? An executor is someone who finds solutions and solves problems, right? Where, you know, conventional knowledge might fail them, you know, con conventional wisdom might tell them otherwise, like that there's not a solution. An executor is someone who finds a solution, right? And, um, you know, like this is something that is more easily understandable than most people, right? Of course, you want to be someone who, like, who is able to get things done and find solutions, right? Because, you know, not only will that help you in your life, you know, achieving the things that you want to achieve and, you know, pushing yourself, uh, get, you know, getting out of life what you want, it also will help other people, you know. The skill of becoming an ex of execution, you know, for, uh, finding a solution and getting to the finish line is something that will serve other people and that's, you know, simultaneously going to inject value. You know, the value is going to come back to you when you help other people in this way. Right. And sometimes becoming an executor means kind of playing outside of the rules. You know, it means kind of thinking outside of the box, right? And this is, you know, a major gripe with people, a lot of people. Like, you know, we're all kind of law-abiding citizens here, you know. <laughs> like, we're not like, it's not anarchy out here. And that's fair enough, right? There are rules, there are rules and regulations in life. But the thing is, many of us kind of take them way too seriously, right? And I'm not telling you, right, I'm not telling you by saying this to become like a lawbreaker, you know, to become, you know, to someone who just like, you know, haphazardly ignores rules and regulations, right? And the law, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, you know, what you might perceive as, you know, rules and regulations that are kind of firmly in place, a lot of the time there are actually ways to go around those rules, you know, and when you, and by going around these rules, we can find, uh, we can, we can basically uh, find better solutions and kind of create win-win situations with other people, right? Because rules and regulations, like, there's a, there's a reason why there are rules and regulations in society, you know, in this kind of structure of life that we have. Um, it kind of keeps like things moving, but there comes a you know a point where rules and regulations become like too stifling and too restrictive, right? They actually stop us from kind of uh, getting more done, you know, and finding better solutions for things, right? So imagine what it would do for you, right? You know, at the point where kind of ninety percent of people give up, you know, like. Um, because they've perceived as, they've perceived the situation as kind of like, okay, well, you know, there's nothing I can do here, right? And you were, you were, you know, one of the few, one of, one of the small 10% who actually see, who actually sees opportunities and solutions, you know, in a situation that is quote unquote hopeless, you know, by 90% of the people, right? You know, imagine Imagine how much more interesting life would be, you know, if, if you weren't so scared of kind of, um, you know, being trapped by life, you know, and being kind of uh, put down for speaking your mind on your dissatisfaction towards, like, pre-existing systems and rules, right? Imagine how much more interesting life would be. Imagine if you developed a joy towards seeing these opportunities, seeing these ways around problems, right? You know, making things happen in life, you know, and, re and thoroughly enjoying the game, you know, how much more enjoyable life would be, you right? So, you know, things like talking to other people, persuading them to see things in a different way, and taking the rule-making unto, th unto themselves, right? Realizing that they set the rules, right? 
the rules don't make you, you make the rules, right? And, you know, and if you do this, not only will you get more in life and help other people get more in life, but you also help other people to become more aware and more intelligent in how they lead their lives, you know, how they traverse life obstacles, right? There's a ton of value to being someone who gets things done, right? I don't really need to say that, as opposed to many, many people in reality who are paralyzed by fear, produced by their kind of preconceptions and their assumptions of how life is, you know, a lot of people then it's like, you know, oh, that's just the way it is, There's nothing we can do about it, you know, uh, you know, let's just, yeah, you know, forget it, you know, it's not going to work anyway, you know, that's the majority of people's mindsets. So, there is a stigma though, like, surrounding this kind of take charge attitude, like, with most people. I mean, when you go to, like, when you read job, uh, job, uh, descriptions, like, where they have requ requirements and things like that. Usually it's listed that, like, you need to be, like, a uh, self-starter and, like, someone who takes initiative, who takes charge, who challenges the status quo, that kind of thing. But in reality, you know, a lot of people are actually against this way of living, right? Because, essentially, it kind of scares them, right? There's a stigma of surrounding people who are, who are executors as being overly persistent, assertive, and deviant, right? And... You know, essentially, people have this preconce preconceived notion that these kinds of people, like executors, are, are like assholes. You know, they're arrogant, disrespectful of you know establishments and institutions, and they cause headaches for you know the average person, like you know, the the person who just wants to sit in their place and you know not rock the boat too much. You know, they're selfish, right? Things like that, and you know, I. I traditionally come from this camp, right? I used to think that you know people who are kind of like overly assertive are just assholes. You know, mostly because I was insecure with myself, you know, scared of, like, scared of those kinds of people, you know. Thinking, you know, well, you know, if, if they have the ability to do this, what does this say about me, you know? What does this mean about my opportunities in life, you know? And you get defensive, right? So, yeah, the feeling that kind of prompts this way of thinking for many people, like the stigma, perpetuates the stigma, is the feeling of powerlessness. And the feeling of pow powerlessness is pervasive in our society. It's very, very present in our society, right? Particularly in, like, you know, more developed countries, uh, you know, societies, uh, cities and things like that. Um, yeah, you know, when, when it comes to becoming an executor, it means a big portion of it is to develop your power, right? And that's really scary for other people, right? When, when someone develops their power, it's really scary for, scary for other people because, you know, they get defensive, right? Because people who, f who feel powerless, they're, over, they're always overprotective of their own weakness, right? So, uh, you know, that's, that's that. And that's the kind of the main barrier that people have towards, um, you know, uh, improving themselves and kind of leveling up in life, right? There's, there's something called... A, the crabs in a bucket mentality. You know, I've been meaning to mention this uh, for a while in, in my entries, but essentially what that is, is basically, it, uh, it uses the analogy of like crabs in a bucket, right? The crabs have been caught and, and have been like put in a bucket. When it comes time to cook them, like, you know, take them out of the bucket, the crabs basically exhibit this behavior where they grab onto each other, right? They grab, they all grab onto each other with their pincers, right? To make sure that no one escapes, right? So it's kind of like, uh, a defeatist um, kind of response, right? You know, if I'm not going to live, no one else will live, right? It's like very kind of self-defeating. And that's the kind of thing that happens when uh, in life, you know, when people want to kind of move up in life and, you know, other people kind of subconsciously hold them back down. I, I mentioned in, you know, really, really old entry, well, not too old, but like one of my uh, first batch of uh, entries, uh, something called, um, well, I mentioned that, you know, there is explicit danger and then there's subtle kind of put downs that you have in life. And this kind of belongs in that second category, like poison dripping is another kind of term that I put in there, uh, where, you know, people kind of, they don't mean to kind of keep each other down, but it's just something that is driven by the subconscious fears, right? So going back to point, um, how do we, so how do we become executors, right? How, if we want to kind of move up in life, do we start to become a person who takes charge, who makes things happen, right? The first step, I would say, 
is to change your mindset, right? And this is perhaps the hardest step, right? It takes the most work, takes the most time, takes the most kind of inner kind of digging. Um, and actually, this is probably this is uh, the reverse of I think what most people would advocate, right? Most people, when they kind of you know in the self help industry and that kind of thing, they would advocate basically going out and taking action first, right? And that's kind of my second step, which is uh, to step out of your comfort zone, right? And this depends what kind of person you are, right? If you're kind of like a more kind of more of a thinker, like more of an introverted, keep to themselves kind of big picture thinking, you know, scattered brain kind of person like I am, then it, pro it will probably help you. You know, I would recommend that you delve into your mindset first, delve into your into your identity and, and do some self work first, right? And develop the mindset from within. But if you're more of a kind of like an outgoing, hands on, extroverted kind of person who's like more kind of physical oriented, then I would probably recommend like the, the you know, the standard approach, which is to get out there and just take massive action and, you know, build your willpower and stuff like that, right? Step out of your comfort zone. So, so the key to, to changing your mindset is similar to what I said in the previous entry, and that is to basically slowly fall in love with the, the process. Fall in love with, like, looking at situations, you know, finding yourself in situations and being able to think up new and uh, interesting ways to get around those situations and to make them better, to get to improve your results, right? Start to fall in love with that, right? Like I said before, you know, good old willpower, that's always something, right? That's always useful. Willpower is always useful to get you started. But to make this permanent shift, to make, you know, the shift from, you know, just being like a bystander, you know, to someone who's passive, to someone who actually takes charge and does all of this stuff, it's going to take a more sustainable mindset, which is, you know, to slowly build qualities such as curiosity, right? An attitude of possibility, you know, like uh, start, uh, starting to see possibility in things, you know, excitement, right, these kinds of feelings. Um, learn to fall in love with possibilities, you know, if I did things this way, if I tried this ap approach, you know, um, could I come, could I come up with some like really interesting things, like could I, could I actually get what I wanted in that situation, right? You know this is working when you start to feel excited about like, when you're out and about and you start to basically see possibilities and like you see challenges as like these fun uh, t uh, these fun puzzles that you can like think about it like in terms of how how can I solve this puzzle right when you start to feel that excitement then it means you're starting to shift your perspective right and like I said the second step is to actually go out there step out of your comfort zone and actually take action right there's not much to say about this aside from um, you're gonna have to do it right. Um, the problem with like the first kind of person, which I am, like the more kind of introverted, stuck in the head kind of person, is like they don't tend to take action. They don't tend to want to take action that much, right? And you're gonna have to take action, like eventually. You know, there's so much thinking, but then you have to actually go and take the action. And you know, you're not always going to be like met with the feeling of like, you know, I'm about to jump out of the airplane. Oh fuck! Like, you know, I'm so scared. Like, you're not gonna have that kind of, you know crazy vertigo kind of response, but you're always going to have to tackle a bit of fear, right? There's always going to be a bit of fear when you're tackling a new situation and when you're testing something out that you've never done before, uh, you know, a new approach. And you just have to kind of get used to that feeling, like feel the adrenaline, like feel the fear, feel the, the subsequent adrenaline and just kind of sit with that and kind of take baby steps, right? Baby step it, you know, go, just keep walking, right? Don't, like, don't retreat back into your thoughts, just keep walking, right? And you need to train yourself to do that, right? If you fail, you know, if you chicken out, if you pussy out, then it's no big deal, right? It's no big deal. Don't beat yourself up over it because it's not, like, there's no point, right? We all make mistakes, you know, we all fail, we all chicken out. Just take it, you know, take it, um, what's the way, what's the thingy? Just take it in your stride, take it in your stride, right? And, uh, yeah, you know, reduce the fear dosage, right? Try something le a bit less threatening, a bit less intimidating. So, you know, rather than 
trying to negotiate for something from someone. Instead, just focus on having a good conversation with that person. Like, if you're someone who's kind of socially anxious and isn't very socially skilled, then, like, work first on kind of becoming comfortable with people, as, you know, instead of, like, jumping right into, like, you know, the meat of it and, like, you know, trying to, like, court someone or, like, win in a negotiation, you know, that kind of thing. So this mindset shift applies everywhere in life, right? Similar to, like, the previous thing about uh, curiosity and developing joy and passion. Right, this this kind of mindset change applies everywhere in life. Right, uh, when you've had an argument with your partner or family or friends, and you want to smooth things over, you know, while moving the relationship forwards. Uh, when you're collaborating with someone and you have an idea that you could really transform the project, right? You see someone that someone you see something that someone else has missed, right? Uh, or you have a potential solution that perhaps a less kind of men- mentally adventurous person. Uh, would resist basically possibly because of litigation <laughs> but um, so you want to change the way you interact with others in general uh, because you want to stop contributing to like a closed off social climate you want to become an initiator of love right I uh, did a video about that um, so whatever the situation there's always a better way to handle it right there's always a better result and there's the possibility to improve the social mood, right? Become a problem solver and a solution finder, right? And you can start to then benefit from upward, upwards mobility in life. And, yeah, everything you do, right? So, becoming a curious soul as opposed to a perpetual skeptic, right? See the game of life as a fun puzzle. Exercise sound judgment, right? Don't just go around doing random shit and getting yourself in trouble. But other than that, play to win, right? See it as a fun game. But, you know, when you're winning, you know, transfer some of those winnings to other people. Like, make it win-win for, uh, you know, generally to other people as well, right? And I'm hoping that you can see, you know, after I've said all of that, that um, this is actually a very kind of loving and connecting thing to do, right? It's a very masculine thing, but it's also a very, um, a very loving, connecting thing, right? Because you need courage to connect with people, right? You need courage to love other people, right? You need courage to trust other people. So, it takes courage. You need courage in life, and this is one of the many ways that you can use to build that and to you know, really extract value out of your life. So you need, you need courage to connect, you need courage to love, and you need connect, uh, courage to trust. But the, first, the very first person that you need to connect, love, and trust is yourself, right? Become someone who makes cool, awesome, beautiful things happen, right? <laughs> cool. That's the end of that, and I hope it was helpful. This should be the end of uh, the dark, these dark entries, but yeah, cool. Hope that was helpful, and I'll see you next time. Peace, bow out.